Okay, so welcome back to a very quick video. This is just going to be a very quick demonstration and also answering some questions that I've been receiving a lot of online over the past few months that I've been absent. So to start off with, these blue boards here, this one here which is plugged into my car currently, is the new uh, board which I will be hopefully releasing to market. Oh, don't know what happened to the camera there. Um, and these support the TRSS modules found in the 90s Mercedes-Benz vehicles, so I hope to be supporting them soon, as well as the uh, 2000 and newer ones. But what I wanted to show this time is, I don't know if you noticed, but there's no USB cable plugged into there. Now, normally when I've been doing data dumping and stuff like that, it's been over a USB connection to my laptop. But I can do stuff now, including firmware updates over CAN bus. So that's what I thought I'd demonstrate today quickly. So first of all, uh, for demonstration purposes, my engine is on right now, and you will see why I've done that. Ignore the check engine light. I have just been flashing my TCU so many times that the engine is no longer happy with me. That is a completely meaningless warning light, just saying that it's stopped receiving CAN data from the TCU temporarily. I can ignore that. So, as you can see, I currently have my VX Diag um, OBD2 module plugged in to my laptop here and I have my Windows Virtual Machine. Now, bearing in mind this uh, config suite does work on Linux as well, if you use socket can or the USB connection option, but for now we're going to select pass-through OBD adapter, and we are going to select the VX VXDiag adapter, and we're going to say launch the configuration app, give it a sec for the driver to initialize, there we go. So we are now in the config app, um, still need to work on the UI, but right now I'm just working on functionality. So what I want to show here is the firmware update utility. So we can select a binary file. Now the hope is that I, I'm just going to quickly find it in my build folder, firmware.bin. Now my hope is that on the, when I start rolling out these boards, I'll have like a build server running on GitHub, which will generate these firmwares on the fly for me and put them in a releases page that you can easily select uh, rather than just having to compile the firmware yourself. So with the engine running, if I press flash firmware, You'll notice the flashing was aborted, EC, reason EC rejected flash programming mode. Reason for that is because my engine is currently on. That's why I want to have my engine on for here. So this stops you from accidentally doing it whilst the engine is running. Now, if we turn the engine off and put it to ignition, just so I can leave it there. And notice how it says P and C at the bottom. That is my current drive profile. I'll just change to something else like A. Now, if we say flash firmware now with the TCU in well, with the engine off, give it a sec. Okay, now we're going to start writing data. So this process takes just under a minute over CAN, which is actually not too bad. And you'll notice the drive profile um, indicator just goes completely blank with a little underscore in the profile selection to say, hey, the TCU is not operating right now. Now you might ask, well, with the engine off, what is stopping someone from turning the engine on whilst the TCU is in a very, very um, delicate state where it's being flashed? Well, I thought of that. I told the engine it can no longer start. See, if I flick the key, nothing will happen because the TCU is not giving start authorization to the engine until the flash is complete. Another couple of questions that I thought I'd might answer is, am I going to sell these boards on the marketplace? Yes, the plan is to do that, but I'm still verifying final functionality before we go ahead and do that. And then I will make an announcement or a huge video about this. And also, where have I been? Well, I've been really busy. I've been in Germany. Um, I've been doing so much recently. I've had no time to make videos. Ah, there we go. Flash completed successfully. And you see we have the P and C display there. And now you still notice I can't turn the key to start the engine. So the simple fix for that is to turn the car, take the ignition out, put it back in. And there we go. Everything works fine. So just a couple more questions very quickly um, about when I'm making another video. Well, I am working on a video, but it has so much animation and stuff like this. It's just taking me forever, bearing in mind I'm also working on TCU stuff like whenever I get time now. Um, so yeah, f stay tuned. Um, I was planning on doing some live streaming though. So I was thinking maybe in the coming weeks I do some live streaming, assembling more of those blue production boards down there. And uh, you guys can watch me assemble that and we can ask some more questions and you guys can have some time actually talking to me rather than just pinging me messages which I don't respond because I'm so busy. So yeah, just wanted to quickly demo this feature and I will see you all in the next one, hopefully sometime in the next couple of weeks. So see you later.